from CL-142, and it wants us to approximate the area under the curve of this cubic for this interval between negative 1 and 3 using 8 left endpoint triangle or rectangles and 8 right endpoint rectangles. So typically how I do this is you don't really even have to draw the picture, but I'm just drawing the picture so that you can understand the concept. Um, typically how you do this is you just, you're gonna find out, um, I need eight rectangles, and I need to be in between negative one and three. So I imagine, you know, whether the graph is increasing or decreasing. I actually, um, I'll share my Desmos with you real quick. Here it is on Desmos. So I can just see that it kind of has this certain shape to it. And I can actually get some of my points. This thing didn't work for some reason. Can I get rid of that? Try adding y to the equation. Oh, wait a second. That's not what I wanted. Anyway, here's here's the um, cubic, and you can move your you can move your cursor along and get some values. Like I know I'm trying to go in between negative one and three, so I can look right here. Well, or you can just plug the numbers in. Negative one, actually, if you plug it in, you'll get. Uh, three, I think. And then if I go to three, because that's my interval. Well, three goes with 39 anyway. You can um, zoom out. So let's go back to the picture. That's why I just drew the picture. So Basically, I just kind of look at it and I go, okay, well, negative one, if I plug negative one in, I actually did it right here. I plugged it into the function, which was this cubic. Here, let's make it so you can see the whole thing. If I plug negative one in, I just get negative one cubed plus two times negative one plus six. And so that gives me three. So I want to know some y values, and it tells me that I'm going in between negative 1 and 3. And so if I look at that on my graph, that's like 1, 2, 3, 4. So in other words, 3 minus negative, oh, 3 minus negative 1 is 4. And I need 8. So, so the span between negative 1 and 3 is 4. And I need it divided evenly into 8 interval or 8 rectangles. So I'm going to go 4 divided by 8, and that's a half. And so that tells me that like the width of each rectangle is going to be a half. So you can work that out on your paper if you want to. You don't have to draw the picture. I'm drawing the picture. Um, so there's going to be a rectangle there, a rectangle. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left and point rectangles. So I know that the area, so if I want the area under the curve, I need to get the area of this rectangle plus this rectangle plus this rectangle plus this rectangle plus this rectangle. Plus this rectangle. I have to add all the areas of all the rectangles. I know the area of a rectangle is... Um, base times height, every single rectangle has a base of 0.5. So really I can just add up all their heights and then multiply that number by 0.5 because that's the base of all of them. So if I can get all their heights, that would be great. And then I'll just add them all up. So I to get their heights, their heights lie right on this cubic curve. So I just need the y values. So I, I actually used Desmos to get all these values, 
I mean, you can see that I plugged the 3 in just to the function. And I got 3 squared plus, I got my 39. You can plug in, you can do this with all of the values. You can plug negative 0.5 cubed plus 2 times negative 0.5 plus 6, and you can get that number. Um, but I kind of remembered somebody telling me I could, like, get Desmos to give me a table, and then I could get the numbers faster. So I, I'll show you what I tried. Well, I tried getting the table. I think you can. Like, I know that there's this table button, and you can get tables. But I just ended up going along and getting my numbers by going, oh, there's one. So like the number on my table that goes with the one is nine. And then I'd go, well, what's one and a half? Oh, one and a half, that's 12.375. Because remember, I, I'm counting by 0.5. So then I need the one for the Y value for two. So I go where X is two. Yeah, I would just kind of, and it, yeah, two and 18. So that's a little bit faster than plugging them all into your calculator. You can just scroll along here, and then I want 2.5. So I'll just go along here and find 2.5. It's just a little faster, 26.62. And I went along, and that's how I got all these values. Again, you can just calculate them in by plugging them in here if you want to. But I got all these values. They're a little bit rounded, so maybe they're not perfect. And I know that my eight left endpoint rectangles are going to be 1, 1 1.5, sorry, 1, negative, negative 1, negative 0.50, 1, sorry, I can't count by half. They're going to be these, these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's why I drew this little line right here. So I just stuck those in my calculator, just in my little pink calculator added them up, and I found out that they add up to 87.1. Those are the heights of all my left endpoint rectangles. You'll notice the 2.5 is the last one that I used, because that's this one right here. I added them all up. I got 87.1, so I went 0.5, because that's the um, base. And then the heights all added up is 87.1. And that ended up with my answer for my area under the curve using left end point rectangles. I saw that your answer book had this summation notation. And I think that you can put this in Desmos. I tried and it almost worked, but you'd have to go watch a, like a video or something on Desmos to see exactly how to, I think you can get it to sum it up for you. But our book, in our book, they taught us this way. So this is, this is probably the way that it was meant for you to have done it. And then for my right endpoint triangles and rectangles, instead of reinventing the wheel, I know that the right endpoint triangles, I can't say, I can't say rectangles. I have to say triangles when I'm talking about this. I don't know why. So um, they'll stick out over the top. So they'll be more like this. And then this one will go. This one will go. This one will go. So you'll see that I'm going to be using, I'll be starting, oh wait, there's more. So the heights of the right endpoint triangles, I'm going to be starting not at negative 1, but at negative 0.5. So I'm just basically just going to add these together. So what I did is I took what I that total that I had in my calculator, and I just subtracted the 3 off of it and added the 39 to it. And that gave me... Um, 123.1 and multiply it by 0 0.5. So these these two boxes, these are the that's the left endpoint approximation and the right endpoint approximation. And again, if you want to go um, to your Desmos, you can try to figure out how to make this thing work. 
I'm going to take that y equals off. I had it almost working. I think I... See, like, sometimes, see how it's like that? That's not exactly what I'm looking for. But it's kind of... I think if you type it all correctly in there, it'll sum stuff up for you. I'm just trying to figure out... It needs to know this right here is are the how they're going to find which x input there is so i thought if i just like cubed this and then well i'll let you guys mess around with that if you want to but um you can always draw the rectangles and do it the way that i just showed and that is it